This first deck today is one I'm actually really looking forward to. I've been enjoying brewing and Pioneer in general. <clears throat> kind of a breath of fresh air compared to Standard and Modern. Um, this is... We played a combo deck around Walking Ballista uh, a couple of days ago on Thursday that was in a Mono Black Vampire shell. And this is a similar combo in a slightly different shell. Hey, the Capel. Once, Calhoun's life kept me away, but I've returned. Well, thanks. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Any, Anywho, so what's the combo in this deck? So Walking Ballista here says... You can remove a 1-1 counter from it to deal 1 damage to any target. Archangel of Thune says, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. And then the trick here is we use Gideon Blackblade or slightly less constructed playable Abzan Battle Priest to give our Walking Ballista lifelink. And if Walking Ballista has lifelink while Archangel of Thune is in play, so long as this has at least two counters on it, this deals an unlimited amount of damage. So if this has lifelink, we'll gain life when it hits something for damage, which will give it another counter from Archangel, which lets us rinse and repeat as many times as we'd like. The core of this deck past that is just a kind of ramp deck. We've got eight elv elves at the bottom here to get uh, fast Nissas, fast Thunes, um, Corsair Crew Fix to generate card advantage off the top of the top of our deck. Um, one of the things I think is potentially really nice about this deck is even when we're not comboing, just Elvish Mystic plus Corsair plus Thune is going to kind of do a Gavany Township impression of sorts and give us a pretty reasonable fair plan. The reason why we're, we're playing this Battle Priest in addition to Gideon, even though Battle Priest isn't a very powerful card, is because we have traversed the Ulvenwald here which uh, finds us creatures or lands out of our deck. So playing a copy of Battle Priest gives us the ability to find all three of our combo pieces with this Traverse the Open Wall. Hey, Bebo, thanks for the three quarters of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Monkey Mike, thanks for checking in for a quarter of a year. Morning, folks. We also got a couple of grapple in the past year as an instant to help enable Delirium. Like, we have Walking Ballista and Corsair anyways, as artifacts and enchantments, so Delirium hopefully shouldn't be too difficult. And then we've got some Nissa here at the top end just because if we're playing eight mana dorks, we might as well play Nissa because sometimes you're going to turn three Nissa on the play and just run your opponent down. Hey, Captain Magar, thanks for the tier two and the dealer's choice points at that. Welcome back. Happy Saturday. Happy end of the year. Let's dive on in to a league with this one and see how it goes, shall we? The plan for the next week for people that haven't been around is we're going to be doing... Yeah, yeah, I can definitely start doing that, squad. That's a good suggestion. I do that on Twitter anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, the plan for the next week is we're going to be doing... Um, we're going to be doing three Pioneer decks and then three Arena decks at a minimum every single day. So plan to do a bunch of hours coming up. My Optic, thank you for the quarter of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. This hand would really like to draw an untapped land on uh, by two, so we can get this coarser down. Hey, Lumbering Falls, thanks for the tip for black-white mediums that I sent this morning. Excellent. My elf has died. The untapped land is less important now. Second, second threats are really scary. It's almost like being on the play is good, chat. It's almost, it's almost like, well, that's all three of our fabled passages. That's super unfortunate. Yeah, I was actually a little bit surprised that Pioneer was as high up as it was on the most recent survey. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fetch another basic forest here. So this way, if I draw basic planes, I can cast Corsair. Whereas if I fetch a planes and then I draw planes, I can't cast Corsair. I mean, that's technically a castable, I guess. So if they pump this, we're taking nine here. It's a lot of damage. All right, so let's start with, I guess I could Nissa this turn technically. I think I'd rather Corsair. If 
think I'd rather Corsair. So if I block here and they pump, I take five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm not dead on board. They have Murderous Rider, we're probably dead. Yeah, I don't think. Not having any plays till turn. Till turn four is just too slow. Too many, too many tapped lands and too many fatal pushes. Alright, so we've got Deccan Stones and an extra scavenging ooze here. Get to go ahead and trim Knight of Autumn. Uh, this is not a Nissa Vastwood Seer matchup. Hmm. I probably don't mind Ishkana. We can make some Spooter friends. That's probably pretty good. It's also possible I just don't want that much top end. Like eight pieces of chunk at the top is probably sufficient. Okay, let's give let's give this a try. Sure. We can grapple on two here, and if we're really fortunate, we could hit another elf and then, like, have turn two second elf. Always fatal. Oh, you just want it in the in the channel info, Squid Squad, is what you're saying. Gosh, they really don't like our elves, huh? This is this is pretty okay for us, though. Like, over overall, I think, like, if they're trying to be a control deck, I think that's good for us. Go ahead and pick my elves back up here and replay them. If we draw land, we can drop a 5-drop next turn. Sure. They're dead, Jim. You got him. Okay, just really want to draw another untapped land next turn. We should be in a pretty good spot. This is game two. We died very quickly, game one. They had very solid aggression plus disruption. Okay. I don't think I think I want to do Archangel before Nissa here. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to play Nissa to bait removal. Uh, we need we need to give this life link CO for the combo to work. So you need a Gideon or an Abzan Battle Priest. If they also have removal for Archangel here, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. I don't think there's anything we could really do here. Yep. That's kind of how magic goes. The black mono black deck's very good. It's a good, good, solid example of the what's it called um cop copter definitely needed to be banned the the opponent's deck is still one of the best decks in this format and that game really showed why they have just like some of the best threats and interaction just thoroughly thoroughly ran us down there both games a hey, drum freak thanks for the third of the year i appreciate that welcome back thanks for keeping me around thought seize thought seize plus resilient threats is a good combination 
Fatal Push is probably also the best removal spell in this format. Not close. Murderous, Murderous Rider is also kind of absurd. It's a removal spell, a removal threat split card. Thanks for the tier three time, Lord. I appreciate it. It's one of my longest commitments in history. It's not It's not a trivial amount of months. It's not a trivial amount of months. Um, I guess Double Gideon No White is awkward, but like these cards are good. And if we draw some white sources eventually, Gideon should be, should play. So the worst possible draws with this hand are lands that don't make white mana. A lot of white source in our deck though. Like that. That's technically a white source chat. If we hit another white source here, sick. Never, never didn't have it, chat. Gideon, Gideon is actually quite good against, uh, is quite good against blue-white. He's a threat that kills relatively quickly that doesn't die to Supreme Verdict. Just, just like we drew it up, chat. Just like, just like we drew it up. Yeah, we are we are all in on the pioneer contents. What? Uh sure. The Reflector Mage in general is a playable card. The thing that's tripping me up is the fact that they went search for his Kanta into Reflector Mage. It's, it's weird to me that this is a card you would want it want in the same deck as Search for his Kanta. The Oratog, thank you for the 19 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Oh. Okay, I guess that makes some sense. They're a God Pharaoh's gift deck. So this helps them find gift and gate to the afterlife. And they want creatures in their bin anyways. Okay. Uh, I did give Scoo's indestructible, but it's still a 2-2 two -two and they have a 2-3, so it doesn't do anything. Oh, I guess I guess I could have attacked with it. And then if they block, I shoot this. I guess. You can just do that, do this, play an elf. Yeah, Refurbish. Refurbish could be real scary here. Puts an artifact from their discard pile back into play for four mana. Yeah, seems neat. Yeah, there it is. Maybe maybe I'm supposed to keep. Maybe I'm supposed to keep the other Gideon in play because of this. I think it's haste too, right? Well, let's start by attacking them to three. Huh. I think I just get set up to walking ballista for three next turn and kill them. 
Ishkana. Yeah, let's grab that for now. Oh, I guess I can't... I guess I can't cast this because I got Reflector Mage. That's really scary. It's going to dump something in there for God Pharaoh's gift to get back. Gross. They ditched a champion of wits. So this is going to come into play and draw for discard two. Yeah, I probably should have just taken a land or an elf back with that instead of this. So I could have six mana for the walking ballista here. That was a mistake. Should have just gone for the punk them out game plan. Mm, I guess if they don't have a blocker, I can attack them for one and then do this for two. So I just have to draw an untapped land or they need to not have a blocker. Rats. Sick. Hashtag, hashtag skill game. Hashtag sometimes lucky. Definitely, definitely did not deserve to win this one. But Magic's a pretty high variance game, so we're allowed to get lucky. Up all night to get lucky. Um, God Pharaoh's Gift. God Pharaoh's Gift doesn't get impacted by Graft Digger's Cage, right? I'm remembering the text on that card correctly. It exiles it and then creates a token. Cage. Cage doesn't do anything here. It exiles it plus makes a token. Hey, J Shrimp. Thanks for the 25 months. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Hey, Turtle. Thanks for the five months. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend wherever you're at in the world. So, Deck and Stone and Knight of Autumn both seem super reasonable. Need four more cuts. Scavenging Ooze is obviously good as well. I'm just going to trim my top end. Keep the combo. Nissa, Nissa lands aren't particularly exciting against an opponent's deck that... Uh, against an opponent's deck that makes a bunch of 4-4s. Four Yeah, I'm in for turn two, Corsair. Forty-two plus decks. I am here. What's going on, D twenty Bandit? Thanks for the biddies. Happy Saturday. Gotta do some lawn, do some laundry, and drink some water. I'm gonna remind chat to the same drink. I think I lead on Courser here, regardless of what I play. Reflector Mage kind of sucks for us. So Courser here, let's just play lands off the top of our library and play with the top card revealed. This card is just so annoying. So very annoying. I think I'm just deploying the idiots here, and then next turn I can Archangel. There's the God Pharaoh's gift. They could 
ditch a creature and then go land refurbish and get that creature back. Definitely one of the opponent's better starts. Agent of Treachery. All right, they don't have a land. That's good. We're definitely not beating Agent of Treachery coming into play this turn. Hey, Cordemi. Thank you for the very generous Tier 2 resub and for the 17 months of that. We put the sword to Kisis. We definitely can. So, I'm going to start with Corsair. I'm basically just going to play... I'm going to I'm gonna play like my opponent doesn't have Refurbish because we just can't beat Refurbish at this point. So there's no point in... If they if they refurbish, they're gonna get back a four four agent of treachery, and we're just gonna die. They've seen they've seen a lot of cards. They're gonna see even more cards this turn. So pretty pretty good chance we're gonna we're gonna lose the game here. Opponent's build seems really sweet. Kind of into it. I guess they haven't stolen my archangel. They take my Corsair or they take my Gideon? They take my Gideon, sure. So we'll get to see if Archangel plus... Uh, If Archangel plus Corsair can do some stuff here for us or not. It also depends on like how good the rest of their stuff is in their hand too. Because like this God of Pharaoh's Gifts puts another big monster into play. We could be in a lot of trouble. It's a Knight of Autumn. Do I fetch this and try for a land on top of my deck? Or do I just keep this here? I think I'm going to try for a land on top of my deck. So, I get to attack Gideon here, so he can't exile something. But then they get to chump block with Reflector Mage, which lets them bring back Reflector Mage next turn. So they're going to get to clear... They're going to get to clear Archangel off the board here. Which is going to be tough to raise. I've got a lot of power here. Kind of the ability of Archangel with Corsair generate a lot of a lot of power on display. But I think what they're doing is ultimately probably a little bit too powerful for us. Okay, they found another God Pharaoh's gift, but... They don't have any things in their bin just yet. Wonder if we're seeing flashback like uh <clears throat> there's casting refurbish, huh? Sure. I guess they're attacking us for 17 here. They're like putting Reflector Mage into play and putting a 4-4 Jason to play. They also they also get to bounce. Uh, yeah, they gave this vigilance. Yeah, yeah, we're very dead. All right, game three on the play. Yeah, yeah. The fact that our our primary graveyard hate here is Graph Digger's Cage is a real big miss for us in this matchup. The way uh, The way God Pharaoh's gift interacted. I think this is a mulligan. The sand's not exciting, but it's fine. I think I'm gonna bottom the traverse and just like keep double elf and hope to draw payoff.
We're still pretty far away from enabling Traverse getting anything other than a land, so I think I'd rather just keep the acceleration. I did board out my Nissas, which gives me less payoffs here to hit. It's not the Archangel I wanted for Christmas. Yep. Let's them draw two, discard two. So fill their bin up with goodies. The opponent's deck seems neat, but they've definitely been running far above average so far. Like, if they untap and refurbish here, they've had discard God Pharaohs into refurbish every game out of th three out of three games. And we managed to win one of those games still. Squib, well done. Thank you for the brand new Prime Sport. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hooklandia. Sick. They don't have refurbish for a change. God, God bless us, everyone. Not feeling good about our chances, chat. Yeah. So we'll get to shuffle that away next turn, which is nice. One of the things that's nice about this deck is one of our combo pieces, Walking Ballista, is also a card that pays us off a little bit when we flood out. We do have something to do with all of our mana. Yep. So flying, vigilance, lifelink can either make two one ones or make itself bigger. And it gives all your other creatures plus one plus one. Uh, we have yet to do the thing. We just won through Honest Beatdowns game one. Feels, feels magic, man. Feels, feels magic, man. At least they haven't hit refurbish yet this game. We do, we do have six, eight mana to cast this Ballista with next turn. So let's just kill Angel of Intervention, which is nice. Their Jace is going to flip over here, though. They have another angel. We're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Woof. Yeah, I don't know that we can really win from this point. I guess, I guess Ballista can kill this one. Super unfortunate. So they get to do this for four. Maybe if they have Stone Cold Nothing, we can have a shot from here, but the odds of them having nothing is pretty low. If three cards plus a clue plus a Jace, they can flash back a charter course here. Yeah, one of the things Magic Online does, one of the things Magic Online really makes you appreciate is how much um, how much of Magic's rigid rule system you kind of bypass through verbal communication in Paper Magic. And that's one of the things that Arena does really well is the way it 
skips through priority of things where you generally don't need it is one of the ways where Arena was such a big jump forward compared to Magic Online in terms of the flow of the gameplay. Magic. Magic Online is very much a... Is very much a digital magic like to a to a T, whereas MTGO or Magic Arena in a lot of ways does a lot of those things that you would normally do in paper. All right, so I get to kill this. I take four, five, six here down to six. I eat this. I, tr I get eaten here. I can remove a counter from this ballista to kill the other servo here. Our deck, our deck does have a couple of these land things in it. Couple, couple, two, three. Wonder if we'll see Jace flashback chart of course here so they could drop you. Could also flip back strategic planning depending on what they're looking for. Strategic planning lets them see more cards. Oh, they're casting Supreme Verdict. That's gross. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty done here. Yeah, I t so I tweeted out um, two different versions of Archangel of Thune combo last night. And one of them, one of them was this build that was a little bit more linear and like kind of an aggressive slant. And then the other one was an Abzan Delirium build. And after playing these games, I kind of wish I would have picked the Delirium build. The Delirium build is also in the queue just further down. We're going to get to it later this week, I think, but... This is really kind of felt to me like showing our, the just trying to be linear with this combo does not seem good enough. The amount of linear other people have and the amount of interaction that people have access to in this format feels like it just races us or picks us apart too easily. Fortified Village looking a little awkward here. Hopefully, if we draw a land that puts this into play on tap, this hand's very good. If we don't, it's going to be a little bit on the slow side. Okay. Take it. If we draw an untapped land next turn, we can uh, Nissa who shakes the world, which is great. Grizzly Salvage. So put him playing Green Black Delirium, it looks like. They took Emrakul to their hand. That's aggressive. I guess they just put four card types in the bin. It's currently cost them nine. All right, so really want to land on top of our deck so we can kill this with Nissa. Come on, deck. <sighs> Oh, oh, magic. I really just like the fortified village cycle of lands. I mean, they're not ideal, but they're better than having fewer dual lands in your deck, JW. This is definitely pretty close to a worst case scenario. In a lot of, in a lot of games, the fortified village lands end up being basically fast lands and in colors that don't have fast lands that's super relevant i'd be very surprised if cord was playable in this format tracks yeah i definitely would play razor verge thicket before playing this but like playing razor verge thicket is not an option we have Oh, that's so incredibly unfortunate. So I get I get to kill Liliana the last top here at least, but I think we're gonna be too far gone at this point. This Ishkanaj is gonna put a lot of, lot of chunk into play. Oh, 
Just missed too many land drops for too long. The battle lands. I don't think the battle lands are very good. I don't really care if they complete that cycle. I'll let this hit happen because I want to uh, be able to cast Nissa next turn if we find a land on top. The battle lands are the ones that come into play untapped if you have two basics. It's kind of just unreal at this point. What is love, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I think we're probably too far gone at this point. It just took us too long to find a fourth land. Especially with them killing our, uh... With them killing our mana creatures. Extra Skews sounds good. I think the Planeswalkers are good for a little bit more grind. Questing Beasts and Emrakul seem fine. I guess Ishkana kind of goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with their Ishkana. I don't, I don't think that's, I think, I don't think your assessment is true, Marty. I mean, saying we lack a game plan when we don't draw the combo is just like patently incorrect. Like Mana Dorks into Nissa, Mana Dorks into Corsair into Nissa, Corsair plus Archangel of Thune plus Mana Dorks. Like these are real non-combo game plans. I think there's an argument that our game plan isn't good enough to be competitive in this format. I think I would accept that as, as an argument. But I think saying those game plans aren't present is incorrect. Yeah, I'm just going to trim around the edges here. I mean, is it is it not great? Can you explain why it's not great? Because, like, one of the best decks in this format is just, like, on the play of fastness of plan. So, like, can you explain why that deck is good on the play of fastness of plan, but my deck's not? I feel like you're being super results-based. I feel like I've played a bunch of games where, like, my opponents have had, like, interaction, disruption, and pressure on curve. I've missed land drops. And I don't know that this deck is good, but I also think, like, our opponents have been running well and we've been running poorly simultaneously. Like, that that last game was a stellar example, right? Like, we needed, we had, like, three turns to land on top, and we had to, like, grapple to eventually find one. And then, like, here, right? Like, we keep turn three Nyssa, and, like, we get Thought Seized and Fatal Push. Like, even decks that are good in this format are going to lose to these draws a lot of the time. Sure, but like if you're gonna if you're gonna like bring that up, it's kind of pointless to say the rest of it, right? Like, well, well, your deck sucks, but it doesn't actually suck. You're just unlucky. Like, I guess it just seems weird. I feel like a more apt assessment would be 
we don't have enough interaction. Because, like, even the mono green devotion deck has, like, Voracious Hydra in it. And this deck doesn't really have any interaction outside of Walking Ballista and Gideon's Downtick, right? So that's probably a more a more apt summary. Not so much that our game plan isn't good enough, but our game plan's not good enough to not be supplemented by some amount of interaction, which is honestly a good thing about the format as a whole. Like the fact that like you can't, you don't want to just be linear. You want to have some way to like poke at your opponent while you go is ideal. I don't. I don't think all in on the combo is a good descriptor either. He's like we're we're very patently not all in on the combo just by just by the virtue of having things that aren't the combo in our deck to do. I think a more accurate summary is that. The non-combo cards we're playing trying to be aggressive are probably worse than just trying to be interactive. If you have a question for a judge, Gold Dead Ringer, I'd encourage you to go into the subs discord and ask for a judge there. I'd also encourage you to um, look up other generic judge chats online if you don't want to join the subs discord. But random shouting, shouting into Twitch chat, generally speaking, is not a good way to get judge advice. I think Gadwick's, I think Gadwick's really good in the non-flash matchups. I think there's just enough flash decks and counter spells in standard right now that I'm just like... Don't really feel Gadwick is necessary in that archetype. Or it's more, more of a liability than a help. I think a lot of the types of matches where Gadwick tends to be good in that deck now have more and more counter spells, which makes Gadwick less appealing. Yeah, if you look, if you look at my Twitter scholar, I had two different deck lists that I tweeted. The other one's not playing Gideon, it's playing um Sorin as a lifelink enabler. green mid-range like green mid-range that doesn't involve like your metagame is green mid-range that doesn't involve flash then yeah Gadwick's probably fine oh I should have given this vigilance last turn right not that it really matters yeah and like a lot of games if you tap out for Gadwick and they counter it you just like lose in the spot Feels real bad. I don't know why they didn't take this and kill Gideon with it last turn. That seems like a mistake on their part. Archangel of Thune really getting to flex what it does when it lives here, which is nice. Hey, good luck, Revelry. They have a removal spell for Archangel here. We're in a lot of trouble. They have five card types in their bin right now. Artifact, Creature, Instant Sorcery, Lands. Five. So Emrakul currently costs eight. I have no, no idea, GW. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. If they find, like, a murderous rider here, we're pretty dead. Because they're going to attack Gideon and then shoot the angel, and then we have nothing left. Hey, Walker. Thanks for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hooklandia. You're having a good one wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, Ballista. Ballista for lethal is a thing. All right, Scavenging Ooze can currently gain them three, which means they are not dead on board. 
Corsair's lethal. How about another land? Is another land lethal? Thanks for the five months, Knight. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Zoran! Make sure you got a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for the 12 months. Hope you're having a wonderful end of your year. Happy Saturday. So they're going to go to one here, and they're going to get a bunch more draws and a way to kill this Archangel next turn. New Prime sub. Watched it on YouTube. Thought I taught you some Bezo Bucks. I think I appreciate that, Walker. Yeah, that Twitch Prime pays my mortgage these days. Also notable here, if my opponent has an 8th land, they can Emrakul us. And then Emrakul, uh, Emrakul eats Archangel as well. The upside is, if they Emrakul us here, we can draw Walking Ballista 2 cards down and be okay. Uh, Ishkana would gum up the board, for sure. Does that make me an Amazon employee? Not according to not according to how taxes work. Not according to how benefits work. Thanks for the five months, Z, and for the tier two at that. Welcome back. Okay. I mean, we didn't we didn't draw many spells that game. What we drew two spells. But one of them was an unchecked Archangel. It's just like, ran them over. In. I want Tracker. I probably want Tracker of my own in this matchup. Let's try this. Thanks, Beansy. Sure. The bottom tracker here. I think I'm supposed to keep my lands. There's a good chance the Selvish Mystic dies. I'm curious as tax orders you files and yeah, you're a gig you're a gig worker basically. You get you get a 1099. My my taxes at an average year involve 1099s from half a dozen or more companies. Depending on where ad, ad revenue and sponsors come from and who I write for and stuff like that. It's a little abrupt opponent. All right, didn't get the self fatal push, so that's good. Two-thirds of the way from chat lethal. Thanks to the four months, TX. Welcome back. I want to say your forthrightness, thoughtfulness, and moral clarity regarding politics are a big reason I felt the need to sub. Keep being a model citizen. Thanks, keep it, thanks Walker. I appreciate it. I appreciate folks like you that step up because of that because I definitely know that there's other people that shy away because I do it but I think it's important to talk about those things on occasion they took tireless tracker here looks like they also dumped a bunch of things in the bin that let them grow the scavenging use up not having a play on turn three here feels real bad. Yep, that's a traverse. I think I'm just shaking the world. Am I? Nah, I'm gonna drop Archangel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're a little bit off of Emrakul. They've got five card types in the bin, so it's currently cost them eight.
No blocks. When's the first Pioneer GP or PT? Uh, January, sometime in January. January 6th is the last like rapid fire ban list update that'll be occurring for the format. Gosh, if they don't have like a grasp of darkness here, we should be in a pretty good spot. Or a trophy. If this Archangel of Thune gets the trigger. Yeah, so I think I'm actually just going to go second Archangel here, Elf. And then, like, attack with this Archangel and double trigger. If they have a trophy, I'm in trouble, but I don't think I can afford to play around that. Please be cracking a clue. Sick. And there's still two to three turns off of Emrakul here. So this is going to connect. I'm going to gain three. All my creatures are going to get two 1-1 one, one counters because double Archangel triggers happen. Um, I would like three mana Tefri to be banned in Pioneer. And I would like for them to ban either Ulamog or a Boreal Grazer because I think the mono green ramp deck is pretty offensive. But I do, I do think most of most of what's been removed in Pioneer is a good is good. I think, I think three mana Tefri should go for quality of gameplay purposes. And I think uh, the ramp deck is probably just too good. I assume one of my Arcanes is going to get Murderous Ridered here. I think you could make an argument for Thought Seize. I don't think Thought Seize is ever reasonably going to be banned. So I think mentioning it's kind of pointless. I don't think that's a card they're realistically going to remove. I wouldn't complain if Thought Seize was banned, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think a Boreal Grazer, Tefri, and Ulamog are cards that could reasonably go. I think anything should come off the list. I'm not convinced that Field of the Dead was a good ban, but I also don't feel that strongly about it, so... Now, I think banning Ulamog is better because Ugin has more counterplay with counter spells. All right, so there's five card types in their bin. They have six lands currently. So if they can add a card type and and play a land, they could Emrakul us. But I don't think that's super necessary. So I have to decide what I want to do here. I think it's just like Nissa make a 3-3 smash with everything. It's the 21 month Seth. Alternatively, I could also Nissa play Tireless Tracker, give them 1-1 one, one counters. I think I, think I want to just smash with everything though. They get to eat one of my things, but then they're taking 11 down to, uh, down to four. And like these are going to be four fours and this will still be here. If they want to kill this on the backswing, these are still potentially lethal next turn. So I think, and like, if they don't want to go to four, they have to trade one of their creatures here. Because they can give one extra toughness to one of their creatures here, but not to both. So I think, I think this is a good attack. Well, they might, they might want to save the Tireless Tracker. They could go to five if they want to save the Scavenging Ooze. But if they want to save Tireless Tracker, they don't get to go to five. And I think, I think they'd rather save the Tracker, yeah. I don't know. It depends on, depends on what their hand is. Like, if their hand's good, they don't need to save the tracker. But if their hand's kind of middling, they need, uh... So, one of my sponsors, MTGO Traders, is one of the many websites where you can just buy and sell Magic Online cards for cash. You can just fill a shopping cart and hit checkout on there. And they send you, send you all of the cards... There's also various services that uh, rent you cards, if you're into that, um, that have various limits based on how much you pay them, but I don't know. I don't have specific details on how those work. Those aren't services that I've used personally before. I've heard good things about Card Hoarders rental service. I've not heard good things about Mana Traders, but again, don't really have first-hand experience with either, so I can't can't tell you specifically based on what I've done or seen. So we're going to play a land, flip this Nissa, make a 4-4. Four, four. I 
Hey, Melodic Lyric. Thank you for the very generous tier three resub and for the fourth month at that. Hope life's treating you swell. Happy Saturday. Modal, thanks for the 21 months. That's a long time. I appreciate you keeping me around. All right, so I don't think I want to trade. I don't think I want to trade this for this here. The problem is they're going to get to Emrakul mana next turn. I think I just put them to one and then like hope to peel a walking ballista is the game plan. Emrakul. Emrakul is going to mess me up next turn, but I think the plan is put them to one, hope to draw a walking ballista after they control my turn. Uh, Nissa won't do it because I'm going to lose a bunch of stuff. So they're gonna they're gonna kill all three of my creatures here. They'll they'll make us attack, and then so we don't want to draw walking ballista this card because they're controlling our turn. We want to draw out the card after that. So all three of our creatures are gonna die here. Uh, I guess that's not true. The Elvish Mystics is gonna get to live. So this has flying, and they're controlling our turn right now. So they'll attack Archangel in. They'll attack this two two in and eat it with one of their other blockers. This will turn into a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, if you want to talk about the details of rental stuff, I'd ask that you take it to PMs. You should also you should also be able to look on the websites for the services to learn learn what they have. They should have details up there. Just not to clutter the chat with too much off-topic stuff. So we have like a two turn window to draw a walking ballista here to steal the game. So we're at, we're at 32. They likely can't gain life next turn. So we're here, one and 11 to kill them next turn. They're attacking for 1923. Not quite lethal. One last shot. It's the chance to roll. Opportunity comes. Yeah, we can kill them, Demir Spy. With the four cards I've been talking about drawing that can kill them. Oh, you're making a meme. I got it. I got it. You're actually asking a question. Apologies. Survey says. Feels. Feels magic, man. Feels. Feels magic, man. I think I'm going to be done with this one. I don't think playing more matches is going to help me learn anything that I haven't felt like I already learned here. So the idea here was we would have kind of this aggressive backup plan to pair with the ballista combo along with the uh, Traverse the Oven Wall to potentially help us find missing pieces on occasion. And just the sum of our parts wasn't really good enough here. In in big part, what jumped out to me was that this deck on the aggressive game plan, the aggressive game plan wasn't good enough to not have interaction alongside it. So decks that were picking us apart and then killing us, we didn't really have any counterplay to it. So this one felt like a little bit of a miss to me overall. Um, I have this Abzan variation in the deck queue as well. This is uh, it's actually very similar to the last deck we just played against, only with the combo shoehorned into it. So this is a little bit more mid-range. It has a number of pieces of interaction in it, so I wouldn't be surprised if this type of configuration is much better. I've got this further down in the deck queue. We'll probably get to it later this week. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get hit a quick ad roll while we get set up for our next deck here. We're going to be playing a blue-white Oketra's Monument deck up next. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out today, folks.